Chapter 30, Treatment of Viral Infections. A virus is an intracellular parasite that consists of deoxyribonucleic acid or ribonucleic acid core surrounded by a protein coat and sometimes an outer covering of lipoprotein. The infectious particle, the viron, does not have the cellular components necessary for reproduction, so they use the host cellular machinery to replicate. The virus attaches itself to a susceptible host cell and then releases viral genetic material into the host cell. The viral material takes control of the host cell machinery for replication. The host cell eventually dies because the virus keeps it from performing its normal functions. When it dies, the cell releases replicated viruses that proliferate and attack more and more host cells. The ability of viruses to transfer genetic material between cells is beneficial in the development of bioengineered drugs and vaccines. Viruses may cause mi minor illnesses such as the common cold and warts or serious infections such as HIV, smallpox, and hepatitis C infection. Some viral infections are linked to cancer. For example, HPV is linked to cervical cancer. Epstein-Barr virus is associated with nose and throat cancers, and hepatitis B and C viruses are associated with liver cancer. Viruses that can cause cancer are called oncoviruses. An antiviral medication is able to inhibit viral replication. Antiviral agents work best when the host has a healthy immune system. This is because antivirals do not destroy viruses, they slow the rate of virus proliferation. The following factors influence the outcome of antiviral therapy. One, the stage of illness at the time therapy begins. Two, antiviral dose. Three, ability of the virus to penetrate the central nervous system. Four, ability of the virus to remain latent within its host. And five, development of antiviral resistance. Herpes simplex virus types one and two are viruses that demonstrate the importance of timing related to the initiation of antiviral therapy. Antiviral therapies reduce the severity of the infection and symptoms only if it begins within the first 24 to 48 hours of exposure to the virus or the onset of symptoms. Other viral infections improved by early initiation of antiviral therapy are influenza and varicella, varicella zoster virus, HSV1 and 2 herpes simplex virus, and VZV are also examples of viruses that lay dormant in host cells and periodically awaken to cause recurrent disease. Box 30.1 shows CDC recommendations for antiviral viral treatment of influenza. Antiviral agents are typically effective against specific viral strains. For example, amantadine acts against influenza A, but not influenza B. Tamiflu is indicated for the treatment of influenza, but it is not effective for the treatment of HIV, HPV, or HSV. Antibiotics are also not effective against viral infections. Antiviral resistance is the ability of a virus to overcome the suppressive action of antiviral agents. It may occur when an individual taking an antiviral drug skips doses or takes them irregularly. Because viruses continually mutate, it is difficult to develop a vaccine to prevent viral infections. For example, each year a new flu vaccine must be developed against the latest virulent strain of influenza. A triple cocktail of drugs is administered for the treatment of HIV and AIDS, known as highly active antiretroviral therapy, H-A-A-R-T, to decrease mutations and improve antiretroviral therapy. There are several strains of human papillomavirus. Cerevex and Gardasil are effective against HPV type 16 and 18, which cause the most types of uh, cervical cancers. Gardasil is also effective against HPV type 6 and 11. So antivirals interfere with virus-specific steps in the replication cycle, specifically 
virus attachment to the host cell receptors, cell penetration and viral encoding, virus regulatory proteins, virus cleavage, virus assembly, and the release of the virus. Antivirals inhibit reverse transcriptase, transamidase, and other viron-associated enzymes, viral transcriptase, and viral messenger RNA. Two types of antivirals are used to prevent or treat influenza. They are the amant adamantines like amatidine and rimatidine and neuromyonidase inhibitors like oseltamivir, zanamivir, and pyramivir. A common ending for antivirals that inhibit viral encoding is mantidine. Amantidine and rimantidine are classified as adamantane antivirals that are used for the prevention and treatment of influenza A. Amatidine and rimatidine interfere with the uncoding of the influenza A virus, a necessary step in the viral replication process. More specifically, they inhibit the activity of the influenza virus M2 protein, which forms a channel in the virus membrane and enables replication after the virus enters the host cell. Oseltamivir, zanamivir, and pyramivir are indicated for the treatment of influenza A and B. So we have treatment of influenza, the different dosage forms and strengths, and the brand names. Rabavab is only available for an IV infusion. And Relenza is only available for a powder for inhalation. Hepatitis B and C are viral infections that attack the liver. The viruses can spread when blood from an infected person enters the bloodstream of a non-infected person, as can occur with unsafe injection practices like sharing needles. Hepatitis B can also be transmitted in semen and other body fluids. Interferons are a family of naturally occurring proteins that are made and secreted by cells of the immune system. They are approximately 2,000 interferon receptors on each normal and malignant cell. Interferons may also be produced by recombinant DNA technology. They are not technically antiviral agents. Instead, they protect uninfected cells by promoting resistance to virus infection. Nucleoside and nucleotide analog antiviral agents that are used for the treatment of HPV are adifovir, lamivudine, entecavir, and talbivudine. Entecavir is effective against lamivudine resistant HPV. Ribavirin is indicated for the treatment of hepatitis C when combined with PEG interferon alpha. Ribavirin is also indicated for the treatment of respiratory synatical virus, RSV. Nucleosides and nucleotide analogs inhibit at least one of the three steps of virus replication. The FDA requires a box warning that Intikavir is not re recommended for patients co-infected with HIV and HBV unless also receiving heart to reduce the risk for the development of drug resistance. In 2014, direct-acting antivirals were approved by the FDA for the treatment of hepatitis C. Most of the direct-acting antivirals are marketed as combination products or are taken in combination with ribavirin or interferons to improve effectiveness and or reduce the development of antiviral resistance. There are four classes of DAAs, non-structural proteins, 3,4-A, NS3 slash 4A protease inhibitors, PLS, two NS5B nucleoside polymerase inhibitors, MPIs, three NS5B non-nucleoside polymerase inhibitors, NNPIs, and four NS5A inhibitors. We have the treatment of hepatitis B and C in this chart all of the different medications and the dosage form and strengths. So you can see for the interferons, they're only available as injections. And then for the nucleoside and nucleotide analogs, we have 
a Rebitol that has a few different dosage forms. And the combination direct acting antivirals are all listed here. And then the treatment for RSV, the Synegus and Virazol. The virus that causes cold sores, HSV-1, the virus that causes genital warts, HSV-2, and the virus that causes chicken pox and shingles are treated with acyclovir, famcyclovir, pencyclovir, and valcyclovir. Acyclovir and valcyclovir are indicated for the treatment of cold sores, genital herpes, and shingles, whereas pencyclovir is only indicated for the treatment of herpes labialis, commonly known as a cold sore. Trifluoridine is used for the treatment of keratojunctivitis of the eye caused by HSV-1 and 2. Cytomegalovirus may be treated with cytofovir, gangcyclovir, or fosgranate. Fosgranate is also indicated for the treatment of a cyclovir-resistant HSV-1, HSV-2, and herpes labialis. A common ending for antivirals for the treatment of herpes and virus infections is cyclovir and cyclovir. A cyclovir inhibits DNA synthesis, which is essential step in the process of viral replication because genetic code is stored in DNA. A cyclovir is approximately 10 times more potent against HSV-1 and 2 than against VZV. High, higher doses are required for the treatment of chickenpox and shingles. Vale cyclovir is an ester of a cyclovir. It has greater oral absorption. It treats the same conditions as a cyclovir, but requires less frequent dosing. Cytofavir inhibits viral DNA polymerase, the enzyme responsible for the replication of new viral RNA and DNA. Phosgranate inhibits the viral-specific DNA polymerase and, reverses, and reverse transcriptase. It also inhibits the replication of the herpes simplex virus, VZV, EBV, human herpes virus 6, and CMV. Gancyclovir is used for the treatment of CMV. It is similar in structure to acyclovir. Gancyclovir is a competitive inhibitor of viral DNA polymerase that result in the inhibition of viral DNA synthesis. Famcyclovir is metabolized to pencyclovir. It has a similar spectrum of activity to acyclovir and is also indicated for the treatment of HSV-1 and 2 and acute herpes zoster infections. It has a longer duration of action than acyclovir. Pencyclovir is an active metabolite of famcyclovir. It is administered topically. So we have treatment of herpes virus and cytomegalovirus. For a cyclovir, you can see we have a few different dosage strengths like capsules, creams, ointments, suspensions, tablets, and solutions. Then for the summary of drugs used in the treatment of influenza, herpes, hepatitis, RSV, and cytomegalovirus are listed with the warning labels and the usual dose and dosing schedule. For the influenza A or B treatments, complete full course of therapy. Obviously that is an important thing for all patients to understand. For Tamiflu, if the suspension, it must be refrigerated and they should shake well every time they're about to give the dose. Of course, complete the full course of therapy. For the Xanmafir, we want the patient to inhale using the discaler delivery device. For hep B, take with or without food, take on an empty stomach and refrigerate, do not freeze these medications. For hep C, do not skip doses, take with food, do not crush or chew. For the herpes, we have herpes virus and herpes zoster, shake well for the cyclovir suspension, begin therapy within 72 hours of onset of symptoms. HIV and AIDS is a global 
public health issue. According to the Joint United Nations Program on HIV and AIDS, 36.9 million people were living with HIV in 2017, which includes 2.1 million children. That is a huge number. There were 1.8 million new infections worldwide daily. <clears throat> So HIV and AIDS are worsened by poverty. Poverty creates the following conditions. Individuals knowingly engage in risky sexual behaviors such as the sex trade. It increases malnutrition, which can weaken the immune system. It decreases access to healthcare and HIV medications, which can increase drug resistance. And many HIV medications should be taken with food and access to regular meals may be limited. HIV is the virus that causes AIDS. The virus attacks CD4 T lymphocytes and weakens the immune system. As the CD4 count declines below 200 cells per millimeters cubed, the viral load increases, the risk for developing opportunistic infections such as tuberculosis, candisis, and cytomegalovirus and other AIDS-defining defining conditions can also increase. The viral load is the amount of materials from the virus that are released into the bloodstream when the HIV reproduces. HIV, like other viruses, lacks the cellular machinery to reproduce itself. It incorporates its DNA into the DNA of the host cell. Then when the host cell tries to make new proteins, it accidentally makes new HIV as well. HIV treatments interfere with specific steps in the HIV life cycle briefly described here. Step one is binding. Step two is fusion. Step three is uncoding. Step four is reverse transcription. Step five is integration. Step six is genome replication. Step seven is protein synthesis. Step eight is protein cleavage and viral assembly. And step nine is virus release. Antiretrovirals are administered to reduce viral load, increase CD4 counts, delay the development of AIDS-related conditions and opportunistic infections, and improve survival. Antiretrovirals fall into six classes. So nucleoside, nucleotide, reverse transcriptase inhibitors, NRTIs, non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, and NRTIs, protease inhibitors, PIs, fusion inhibitors, chemokine receptor antagonist type 5, and HIV integrase strand inhibitors. International treatment guidelines have been established for initiation of antiretroviral therapy based on CD4 counts and whether patients are symptomatic or asymptomatic. Antiretroviral therapy is a lifelong commitment and requires strict adherence to treatment regimens. To reduce antiviral resistance, HAART, a regimen of three or more medications from two or more anti retroviral classes is prescribed. Combination therapy improves effectiveness and decreases the risk for developing resistance, but many increase the adverse reactions. Antiretroviral agent resistance testing is recommended prior to the initiation of therapy with antiretrovirals and prior to changing therapy. Many nucleoside and nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitors are prodrugs that are activated by host cell enzymes. They competitively inhibit reverse transcriptase, the enzyme that makes a DNA copy of the viral RNA. Abacavir is an NRTI. It is an ingredient in the triple antiretroviral therapy that combines 
Abacavir with zitovudine and lamivudine. It is also formulated with lamivudine as a dual combination therapy. Didanosine is an NRTI. It is metabolized to an active metabolite that has an intracellular half-life of 25 to 40 hours. Therefore, the drug can be dosed once daily. Emtricitabine is an NRTI similar to lamivudine. Cross-resistance occurs between lamivudine and emetriciptabine. Cross-resistance refers to the development of resistance to one agent in a particular class that results in resistance to the other agents in the class. Lamivudine is an NRTI that is effective against HIV, including zitovudine resistant strange strains of HIV. Lamivudine also inhibits replication of HBV, so it is a good choice of therapy for those who have both HIV and HBV. Stavudine is an NRTI. It is similar to zitovudine. Stavudine has a short half-life and must be administered more frequently than some of the other NRTIs. Tenofovir is an anti NRTI, it is administered orally. Food increases the bioavailability of this drug, and it has a long intracellular half-life of up to 50 hours. Zitovudine was the first available antiretroviral, and it was introduced in 1987. It is an NRTI, and it is formulated for oral and parenteral administration. The drug may be administered orally to pregnant women and intravenously during delivery and as a suspension to neonates. It has been shown to decrease perinatal mother-to-child transmission of IV of HIV from 25 to 8%. So that's a huge decrease. All right, so we have all of those listed in other dosage forms and strengths. And then we have fixed dose combinations of those medications. <laughs> NNRTIs bind to viral transcriptase. They differ from NRTIs in three important ways. Their NNRTIs are non-competitive inhibitors of reverse transcriptase. They do not need to be activated by host enzymes, and they are not effective against HIV-2. With the exception of nevirapine, NNRTIs are only used in combination therapy with NRTIs and PIs because resistance develops rapidly. Daliverdine, it has a short half-life and must be given in multiple daily doses. Efavirenz is an ingredient in several fixed dose combination medications used for the treatment of HIV-1 infections. It is also available as a single ingredient product. However, monotherapy is not recommended because of the rapid development of resistance. This medication is teratogenic, so the drug should not be administered in the first trimester of pregnancy, and women taking the drug should be advised to avoid pregnancy. Nevirapine is the one NNRTI that may be administered as monotherapy for the prevention of mother-to-child transmission of HIV. It is administered as a single dose. Controversy exists about the use of single dose nevirapine therapy because of the risk of developing drug resistance. Treatment of mothers with triple antiretroviral therapy reduces the risk for developing antiretroviral resistance. And then we have all those listed here with their dosage forms and strengths. Protease inhibitors in interfere with step eight of the HIV life cycle. They block the cleavage of long chain viral proteins into individual proteins that are assembled to make a new virus. PIs are administered as combination therapy. Most are recommended to be given along with retinavir. A common ending for protease inhibitors is navir. Boza amprinavir is indicated for the treatment of HI1 infections. It is a prodrug that is metabolized to the active drug amprinavir. The effect is boosted with a co-administration of retinavir. 
Atazinavir is another PI that is effective against HIV-1. It is effect, its effectiveness is increased when the drug is co-administered with ritonavir, concurrent administration with the NNRTI, efavirenz can decrease its bioavailability. Darunavir has advantages over other PIs and the cross resistance is low and it provides a great reduction in viral load after just 24 weeks of treatment. <clears throat> Idenavir must be administered in three daily doses. Absorption is affected by food, so the drug is taken on an empty stomach. To avoid the formation of kidney stones, idenavir should be taken with at least 1.5 liters of water daily. Nelfenavir is a competitive inhibitor of HIV protease that is typically administered as part of a three-drug regimen. That includes idenavir, Everens, and or abacavir. Ritonavir is a competitive inhibitor of HIV protease. It differs from other PIs and that is effective against HIV-1 and HIV-2 proteases. Sequinavir is formulated as a hard gelatin capsule in a film-coated tablet. Tepranavir is a sulfonide that selectively binds to HIV-1 protease. It has a lower rate for the development of resistance than some of the other PIs. So we have protease inhibitors used for the treatment of HIV and AIDS listed here. And then we have the combinations listed in their dosage form and strengths. Fusion inhibitors interfere with step two in the HIV life cycle. Fusion is required for the virus capsid to release its content into the host cell. So we have Fusion, which is only available as a powder four solution. Maravirac is a human CCR5. It is the only agent in this class and it is a novel drug for the treatment of HIV. It inhibits HIV entry into host cells. And that cell entry, it is available as an oral solution and a tablet. Dola 2 Graver. Elevit Graver and Bicter Graver are HIV integrase strand inhibitors. HIV resistance can develop quickly, so it is indicated only in combination with other antiretroviral agents. And those are listed here, along with their combination integrase strand inhibitors. And then we have the summary of drugs used in the treatment of HIV which we went over most of these, but we have the brand names and the warning label. So we have Vidax for the nucleoside reverse transcrase inhibitors, Epivir, Zara, Virad, Retrovir. And we have all of their warning labels. So take exactly as directed, don't skip doses. That's for all, because of course, missing doses can increase the ability for the body to have resistance against these medications. And that would be really bad if you had HIV um, because eventually the medication would not work. Avoid alcohol for combivir and take on an empty stomach for dianosine and a triptla and simv. And then over here we have avoid pregnancy for the i I for brands. and some of them are protect from moisture, swallow whole, do not crush or chew, take with food. And again, remember most of these do require to be taken with food. And you can see there is quite a few different HIV medications um, and a lot of them are now available as combination products.